Bien, ahora sí creo que vamos a empezar. Buenas tardes con todos. Eh, Good afternoon, por... everyone. Thank you for participating in this session. I'm Sandra Reyes. I welcome you. I'm part of uh, the staff of LACNIC. This webinar is uh, on uh, the exchanges uh, of results uh, at a regional level of the FRIDA program. Actually, this is the second part of uh, the webinar. We'll have, we have quite a few panelists. Alicia Zucchetti will be the coordinator of the cooperation and research projects of LACNIC, is going to uh, uh, chair it. And uh, I'm going to give you a couple of announcements. We're going to have a simultaneous interpretation in three languages. You can choose uh, the language you, uh, you'd rather listen to in um, the uh, click on the globe uh, in uh, the toolbar since we are going to be using different languages. Also, take into account that this webinar will be recorded, so in future days we'll share the uh, recording. Finally, we'll have a Q&A session once you complete your session, uh, this uh, talk. So we suggest that you can write down uh, your questions in the Q&A uh, panel that you have in the Zoom uh, uh, toolbar. So thank you for your attention. And now I recognize Alicia. Alicia. Thank you, Sandra. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome. As we said initially, we want to welcome you to the second webinar on FRIDA, uh, the Regional Fund for Digital Innovation in Latin America and the Caribbean. Actually, this second webinar is also aimed um, as the first uh, webinar that we held in uh, July, in June, to present some uh, results and solutions uh, that stem from uh, the projects that were conducted this year. So we'll specifically focus on three, open and audit, um, an open uh, source uh, tool developed by RNP, the National uh, Research and Education Network of Brazil. It was funded through a grant in 2020 in the category stability and uh, security of the internet. On the other hand, the um, Brasilinia that uh, was organized by the Pan American Institute of Right and Technology of Panama, that re they received a grant uh, awarded by Frida under the category open and free internet. And finally, the project deployment of the honeypot in Latin America, the Caribbean by Zedia the Equatorian Agency for the Development of uh, Research and the uh, Academia of Ecuador. In this case, it was a grant uh, 2020 under uh, stability and security of the internet. So we welcome you all and we also thank you for your time. The objective of this panel, as I mentioned initially, is to exchange with our panelists the projects that uh, they developed and to get to know the initiatives. Let me now introduce each of them. First of all, we have Guilherme, l'advocate who's a computing engineer who works with uh, uh, computer networks, so focusing on uh, large scale and complex networks. Since 2014, he has worked in the academic, uh, in RNP, the Brazilian network, and he has multiple certifications. In recent years, he has worked in projects in multiple areas, including security, telemetry, IPv6, automation, and uh, uh, data uptake. Guilherme is working, is participating as a person in charge of the open net audit. On the other hand, we have Germán Pérez, who's uh, the founder, uh, Lia Hernández Pérez, who participates for Insurance Online. She is a lawyer in Panama and Spain. She graduated from the School of the College of uh, Lawyers in Brazil. She has a master's degree in Italy, in Bologna. And in uh, 2008, she got uh, an ICED scholarship 
for a master on ICTs in uh, Charles III University in Spain, and she uh, was a member of faculty too. She's co-founder of Ipandetec, and she also works in many other organizations. Leah will be participating, representing the project developed in 2021 called uh, uh, Insurance Online. On the other hand, we have Jorge Merchan, who's a specialist in cybersecurity in CCR Seria, responsible for project management uh, and uh, investigation of internet, uh, of IT security and incidents, and Francisco Reynoso, engineering and cybersecurity in CCR Seria, responsible for managing events and incidents related to IT security, detection and prevention of intrusions, network analysis, among other aspects. Both of them will participate under the project, deploying the uh, uh, honeypot in Latin America and the Caribbean. Welcome you all. Thank you again for your presentations. And thank you for having accepted to participate today. And just as we start, I wanted to ask you whether you can briefly tell us about the work of your organizations, also for the people who may not be familiar with the, the work. Well, you come from very different organizations in your countries and at a regional level, but maybe you could tell us about your general work and the key uh, themes of each. So let us start with Guillerme, and then we'll go on with Leah, and finally by Francisco. research and education network uh, in Brazil. Um, so we connect research and education institutions around the country. We have presence in all states. Um, we have a backbone connecting all the states with high capacity circuits. And we provide connectivity to, to all this community as well as high-end services. Um, we have a, a huge network in, in Brazil, so and we have complex situations in terms of of network and security, and and we have a, a lot of, of a lot of work today uh, using the, the the best technologies to to address the, those situations and and solve these problems. Muchas gracias, Guillermo. Lia, adelante. Thank you, Guillermo. Lia, go ahead. Lia, Jorge. Lia. Jorge or Francisco, would you like to make any comments about uh, the work uh, by Seria in Ecuador? Yes, sure, Alessia. Seria is the Equatorian Organization for the Development of Research and the Academia, and it promotes the results of innovative uh, um, uh, studies, projects, and of uh, researchers, students, uh, and uh, through contests, generating a constant loop of growth uh, between the different uh, organi education organizations. Its aim uh, is, first of all, uh, quality education, promoting the efforts of the academia through all its benefits. And among all its achievements in recent years, we have that the implementation of the uh, continuing work uh, with a whole range uh, of uh, courses. We also have funds for training and updating knowledge through specialists and experts and the management of platforms of uh, open access uh, platforms. 
and we maintain the uh, staff uh, providing updated work and uh, that is one of and we have programs for funding through um, uh, funds um, and uh, support to research the destination of the funds also through programs that provide financial stimuli in all the areas uh, of uh, research some um, research options are the R plus D and the funds are one-to-one -one that are funds for universities and non-academic organizations such as NGOs or states or, or private companies and register that is to promote data protection. And finally, CEDIA seeks to look for, provide a, a, a richer spectrum, including CERT, that is in charge of receiving and responding and, and to reports on uh, security incidents in all uh, in all the country. It receives a lot of security feeds in institutions around the world to collaborate and to support in the response of uh, cybersecurity incidents. And it must also uh, disseminate all the information uh, collected to the uh, all the communities for them uh, to uh, adopt uh, preventive actions and corrections. Thank you, Francisco. Leah. Good afternoon. My name is Leah Hernandez, and I'm the founder of Ipandetec. That's a non-profit organization based in with headquarters in Panama that promotes the use and regulation of ICTs and the defense of human rights in uh, the digital world through the analysis, the incidents, monitoring, uh, and uh, of internet-related uh, public policy with a uh, human rights and gender approach in uh, Central America and Dominican Republic. Thank you all. In that regard, and going directly to the projects that you develop, um, we'd like you to tell us about the initial objectives some of them started in 2020 others in the case of epandetech in 2021 what were the specific challenges that you wanted to approach through those projects let's start with guillerme and then we'll go on with jorge or francisco and leah okay so as we see in the internet many aspects in terms of security holes uh, vulnerabilities and misconfigurations uh, we started thinking how to address this problem inside our network first and then open to the community and we started developing a software to do network audits uh, in an agnostic way uh taking care of multiple vendors and have the best practice in terms of security applied to these devices so we started developing this this software uh, in 2019 actually and then in 2020 we we rethink the the, the software to, to have a more robust approach and uh accomplish more more vendors to it so it it was a big challenge because when when we have multiple vendors uh, we have multiple ways of implementing the same technology so we had to to abstract this 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 uh this way of, of functioning and collect the data uh and analyze the data and then uh, suggest modifications to to avoid misconfigurations and vulnerabilities and security holes so this was the the main the main challenge to have this this broad uh, scope in terms of vendors supported by the software as well as to have this functioning in a real world real world uh, scenario like we, we started uh, developing a, in a virtual environment and then move it to physical equipments 
and we saw differences in, in this in this approach so this was another big step to that we we had to to address Antes de, de continuar, Guillerme, Before sí. going on, Guillerme, could you please add comments on the details and what was the overall objective of the Open Net Audit project? So this is for those who are not so familiar with the initiative and the information that we have regarding that project. That would be great. Uh, yeah, as we as a we see many, many technicians configuring devices in different ways. Uh, we see uh, security gaps in terms of configuration. So the, the software, uh, the main goal is to, to have this baseline uh, in terms of security best practices applied to, to those network devices. So and facilitate this to to technicians and network analysis that don't have the the security skills to so it it has this in mind also perfecto muchas gracias eh, jorge o francisco jorge o francisco eh, acerca de Could you make comments on the deployment of the honeypot project thank you very much alicia yes in that context what we have to consider is that this project was not only de developed by syria but in addition to the freedom this was through another non-profit organization. I'm sorry, the audio is not very good. So together with the two organizations, the objectives we pursued in that context was to compile information on different types of attacks on computers in the entire Latin American and Caribbean region. These occur within the network itself or from outside the network, or even from outside the Latin American and Caribbean region. One of the additional objectives of this project was to provide the organizations with useful information on the attacks to the different networks. Now, this had the additional objective of providing visibility. So each of these attacks that were carried out in the different networks in the region were analyzed and compiled directly in a log management platform. This then took us to integrate different organizations. This included several CSERT teams from the region, from the Latin American Caribbean region. In addition to that, this helped us to have a unique view of the various threats to the probes. So we checked the devices that were infected or vulnerable in the region with the C search teams that participated in the project. So one of the challenges that was mentioned as such at the beginning was to deploy 50 probes in 15 countries of LAC region. This was one of the goals at the beginning of the project. But over the past two years, we implemented 52 probes in 20 countries, and we obtained results from these. Now we have the request from four additional organizations from the LAC region to include additional probes in our project. One of the further challenges that we had as such in this project was compilation storage and of the logs with more than 40 or 50 probes, the amount of data that was generated was almost too much. And we had the issue of having a platform to manage and distribute all these logs. Thank you, Jorge. We will then expand on some of the concepts that you have just mentioned. Leah, now you have the floor regarding this project. Yes, our project seeks to 
make the gender violence agenda more visible in Central America and Dominican Republic. This is a project that we developed because most of the projects lacked statistics, lacked data, real data on the problem. So we wish to improve public policies in the region. This has to be done based on existing and updated data. However, this did not exist in any of the countries, in the public ministries, in the law courts, in the ministries, or in the institutes of women that would make the issue of digital violence visible. And we've placed the focus on the population that is most affected by gender violence online. These are women, the LBGTI uh, community, and the ethnic communities in many Latin American Caribbean countries, as well as the Afro-descendants. So this is how we developed this project, which was based in an initial stage, which was funded by Latinx Frida program. Now we are in a third stage with a third donor. So we have seen a scaling up of this project and the need and the interest that the citizens have, particularly the donors, to raise your awareness on a scorch that many of us suffer from, but keep quiet. And many behaviors in the cyberspace are a form of digital gender violence. Thank you, Leah. Now going on, Con lo que comentabas. going on with what you were saying, and then we'll give the floor to Guillerme and to Jorge or Francisco, so they can tell us about their projects. In all these initiatives that are long-term initiatives with multiple objectives, it is difficult in some cases to imagine the multiple activities these imply. That is why it is also interesting to know more, if you can let us know, to know more about what activities the project implied, for example, online security in this initial stage where it was funded by this FRIDA program or in the following phases. And when then go on with Jorge, Francisco, and Guillermo to learn more about the other projects and what are the activities that you in would highlight, or which are the landmarks or milestones that you would like to highlight in the framework of the development of these projects. Yes, what I would like to mention is that one of the main activities that we organized in the context of this program and the FRIDA program was a survey because we didn't have data, so we had to have information as to who was suffering from digital violence. So we conducted a survey, including typologies of behaviors that are considered digital violence. These typologies were worked with members of the civil society, for example, an organization, Luchadoras del Mexico, and other organizations from Mexico. This shows those typologies and we did a fully anonymous survey asking them to describe the geographical areas they represented, where they lived in Central America and Dominican Republic, and the type of behavior they have suffered from. And if also they wish to expand on that. And it was quite difficult to obtain the responses to many of the surveys. People don't wish to tell whether they suffered from some form of violence. They don't even want to recall what happened. For many, this might sound a bit foolish and unimportant, but this does have psychological impacts on someone who has suffered from digital violence. And mostly, we had to postpone the data collection from the survey to further months so that we could obtain more results to really have a visualization of the study. This was supported with focus groups before and after the survey. This was done by civil society organizations from Mexico. And this was to listen to the main concerns and how to con transmit in an inclusive language 
the information so that we could learn about these cases of digital violence. It happens that very often a lot of people speak about digital violence and many times it is women who suffer from this. So we spoke about how to support these people and how to manage this project. Finally, with that input, with that data, we worked confidentially. Nobody gave their names or any personal information that would allow them to be identified, except for the few people who did contact us and wished us to publish their stories of gender violence so that other people who had suffered from this could seek assistance rapidly. So we have a platform that is segurasonline.ca. There we have the information that was collected, classified by gender, by sexual inclination, and by geographical area, as well as on the different types of violence. So in countries such as Panama, digital harassment or online harassment is the most common form of gender violence. In countries like Costa Rica, identity replacement or grooming is more common. So these are countries with similar realities, but each country suffers from digital violence in a different way. So in some cases, there was a behavior that was used more commonly compared to another. Nevertheless, the type of behavior people suffered most from was that of digital harassment. Thank you, Leah, Jorge, and Francisco. Thank you, Alessia. Regarding the main activities that were carried out throughout the project, we have the optimization and the, of the implementation of these probes. This should be done simply and with minimum resources. And using the technology, they should comply with the minimum requirements. If it's virtual device or on virtual, so with several technical specifications and 20 gigas of storage, including a sage remote access. So in addition to that, we implemented log management platforms to compile, index, and analyze data submitted directly. One is with, in coordination with CSAS from the region and through the child server, distribution and communication networks were organized for the CSERT. And this with the aim that all the information could be submitted to all the security teams and managed correctly. In addition to that, all this was done with the aim of implementing a system capable of providing information available in real time. This information on unusual activities addressed at the probes, for example, registration of all the activities done by the attackers, the exposure to potential issues, and critical system, the compilation of comp indicators of compromise, IP, source IP, destination IP, and other issues registered in the probes. De manera, de manera inmediata, para que se pueda dar también, eh, para que todo esto. It is all done immediately so that all the information may be directly submitted to all the organizations that collaborate with the project and all this information about their networks and their equipment through the access of their administrators to the sensor networks. Thank you. Thank you, Francisco. Thank you for briefing us on uh, these activities of the project in Yerme. Please. Yeah. So we had to develop the, the software to integrate the network devices to a core system so this connection is what was implemented in a in a broader way using libraries from open, open source community and we had to integrate this these connections to this this core system as well as the front end so the users could have the the management of the system uh, enhanced to generate reports 
to have the the audits being done and without a much deeper knowledge in terms of security so the, the system would take care of this and recommend the the best practice that should be applied to the network devices so to the end users it was uh, very easy to 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 deploy and we had in the in the back office we had to to study and implement the the best practice for multiple vendors and we we also tested them in in production first in in a lab environment and then in production we had to make partnerships with other networks to to validate this these vendors that we we don't have in in our network so um i think this summar summarized the 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 project what what was done gracias guillerme y para pasar eh, thank you guillerme and now um as we were told you just commented on the key objectives and the challenges that you sought to approach through quite uh, different uh, projects and also with different objectives the activities i i i would like you to think of the main results which do you consider where the main results of each project which would you highlight and which do you think that could be scaled up or in which you go more in depth leah mentioned something about scalability that's peculiarly important in general and specifically in the fund frida as an instrument of support to projects and initiatives in Latin America and the Caribbean. And through their projects, we can learn more about how to develop scalable initiatives. So, Guillerme, could you tell us about the results that you would highlight and which do you think that could be either deepened or expanded go ahead in our network we saw uh, a huge impact in terms of problems that were observed uh, in the past due these gaps of security so we could see in, in practice that that the the system was was taking effect mitigating this, these risks uh, and talking to other networks we saw that the, the system was working fine but we don't have data about that as the the software is implemented in a standalone instance but the the goal is that each network can run and fix problems that are being in in networks for a long time and and something that we, we should uh take take a look is that the networks are very dynamic and the vulnerabilities change the network APIs change also so uh i think that this this software or another uh should have to, to follow this this dynamic ecosystem and to address this these vulnerabilities and security issues so yeah and and today the software is supporting five vendors that are the main that we we grasp on but probably that there, there are more that can be added to the system and it's another point to, that can be improved. Muchas gracias, Guillermo. Jorge. Thank you, Guillermo. Jorge, Francisco, go ahead. 
It was a pleasure. As a matter of fact, of the experiences that we saw when we were implementing the project as such, and that uh, are among the activities that we are currently reviewing, is that we are deploying uh, several sensors. There are four that will be deployed either this month, this week, or next week. So one of the future works is we continue to deploy sensors across Latin America and the Caribbean. Another important item that was the implementation or the support to implementing platforms of the different sea certs in Latin America and the Caribbean so that they can uh, report only the results of the data in their networks. So for, for the future, we'll continue to help the rest of the sea search in the region, first of all, so that they can incorporate sensors in their countries, and second, to raise platforms so that they can receive the data and uh, distribute it to each of their member organizations. Another issue that we considered was that together with uh, that we can complement the communication campaigns indicating the most common attack vectors and either weekly or monthly or yearly because we use the dashboard and we'll be able to analyze the different attack vectors both in south america north america or globally but as we uh, operate in Latin America and the Caribbean, we can check the situation of different vectors of our region as such. Another important item that was mentioned in the project is that we managed to uh, generate uh, uh, pro research projects and thesis with uh, statistics of the uh, indicators of compromise of the people that have one uh, attacked uh, the network. So that is one of the future projects that we would uh, pose for the future. Excellent. Thank you, Jorge. Leah, go ahead. Yes. As I mentioned earlier, one of the key challenges was to be able to engage all the people that could give answers to develop the charts, the statistics, and uh, generate data on the results of the project. And equally, the cooperation was quite good, including a range of uh, stakeholders, both the civil society and other organizations that discuss uh, the issues of digital rights, but uh, uh, women, uh, LGBTI, LGBTI, and gender issues. And we also had uh, an approach with the government because we wanted to check that the information that we had to uh, collect would not be available so, so that we would not be reinventing the wheel, but uh, that we would collaborate. And unfortunately, we were confirmed uh, what we suspected that there was a lack of information. So we'll have to cover a number of areas. We managed to scale up the project for the second stage, that is maintenance of the platform, and then a second stage that consists of training different uh, actors for digital violence in each of the countries. That is what we're doing currently. And we have uh, uh, followed the court, uh, the trial, if in one of the case of a person that was harassed. However, as the figures of the survey indicated, as there is no regulation in our countries, uh, and the, when uh, you file a claim for digital harassment, it's not likely to thrive because there are no, um, it's not typified in our law, and it is very difficult to launch uh, a file for a behavior that is not included in the penal code of uh, the countries. I think that these are challenges that we saw at the beginning of the project, and but in the future uh, stages, we will make it more visible. And so we want to visibilize us and to normalize it and to point out that this is happening to many people at present. Thank you, Leah. Yes, indeed. 
in the case of uh, uh, Security Online, as you mentioned, the results, the materials, the training, raising awareness to was uh, one of the key outputs. And finally, I would like also going on with Leah to close the uh, conversation. We would like you to tell us about the key lessons learned by the organization through uh, this project and how do you think that those uh, uh, that can be used or considered by other organizations that are planning to develop uh, similar initiatives. Of course, this platform has not been developed exclusively to be a deliverable in a project and to show and to justify the support for this project. This was essentially used uh, for us uh, to be a, a resource available to all citizens and for all those that are victims of, or either a family, a relative or a friend that is going through this so that they can find resources and uh, so that they may know where they can go in their countries, especially in the digital world. What should you do? Who should you should report it to? Because what we realized is that the people wanted the information to be short and concise. However, in the next step, that is going to uh, an administrative and judicial authorities in the countries, the, the treatment of uh, the people that are victims of digital harassment, uh, they don't know about uh, the courses, about uh, the problem. So they show no empathy. So that's a scourge. But it's a platform that may be used for a lot, not just for the victims, but for the authorities to find out what digital harassment is all about for teachers at schools or at universities, because from a very young age, children are victims of digital um, uh, harassment. And there is increasing harassment and digital violence in the organizations because of the poor use of technologies for teleworking and for authorities so that based on existing data of their respective countries, they can issue public policy in line with what happens so that we will no longer um, uh, copy what's happening in the rest of the world. I don't know, Mexico or pa in Panama, it's very common, but in they always show cases that occur in other parts of the world because they think that nothing has happened in Panama because of lack of investigation. And so this is a resource for many um, so that um, is uh, valid so that you can be the best, uh, that this can be the best ally for those who want to report on uh, um, gender violence. Thank you, Leah. Jorge, Francisco, could you tell us about um, some of the key lessons learned that said he had through this project and which do you which you think that could be taken into account by other organizations? Go ahead. Thank you, Alicia. From the lessons learned, we could identify how to identify malicious traffic in our networks and in the Latin Pan region let networks. We also could work hand in hand with four teams. This was to implement a platform to have these logs from the different attacks. And we'd also support research projects with the statistics that could be compiled. This allows us to verify things by the CSERT teams in the region. This was useful for the CSERT teams and for all the members. 
of the teams. The people who are following this webinar, for them to participate in the projects as such, which I would recommend is to become familiar with the FRIDA program, which is a regional fund for innovation in the Latin American Caribbean region. It is important to understand what this FRIDA program is about, to study the different objectives and selection criteria, as well as the thematic areas. Those that are currently considered for the 2023 were internet security, connectivity, access to the internet, and an open and free internet. A further point to participate in this project is that to see which are the eligibility criteria, you can visit the website to determine when the calls are up and coming. Thank you, Jorge. Guillerme, can you please tell us briefly what are the main lessons learned from OpenNet Audit and what the development of the project as such was? And what do you think could be potentially used for other organizations interested on that topic? Okay, so we started uh, this project with a very, very tiny scope and this was uh, a big advantage as we focused on on the issue and we we started developing a proof of concept to validate our idea and see if this idea was accepted in the organization and then we addressed the the main the main improvements necessary to have this this software to run in a more global and more scalable way. Um, so I think the the success of this project was to have this approach to have the the very small uh, size in, in the in the beginning and then improving it with the necessary the necessary resources and necessary features so i think that in many in many aspects of network automation and security uh projects with with uh, huge and complex scenarios can 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 get frustrated if they can't address the whole. So if you if you focus in, in what the problem is and you want to resolve, you can then uh, plan to 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 improve your your solution, your system to address more, a more complex and more broader uh, scenario, and as well as you can optimize resources and don't waste time on in in some in some aspects that y you you could not have a success muchas gracias guillermo bueno muchas gracias thank you guillermo thank you very much to everyone for your time for your availability to participate in this webinar. This was very important to learn more about the projects. We will afterwards make more information available as to where you can access each of the websites of the organizations like Jorge was mentioned, mentioned a while ago, and also to access information regarding the initiatives they developed. So thank you very much to all of you, Guillermo, Jorge, Francisco, and Leah. And we'll now take a look at some of the questions we have for each. I will now read the questions out. And if in the, over the coming minutes we receive more questions, then we will be asking them as well. First of all, we have a question from Najera. His question is addressed to the different colleagues. 
and he also congratulates you for on your different initiatives. He states that this without doubt contributes to the priority attention of needs and improvement of different aspects of the Latin American community, both in the social and technical scope. Thank you very much, Pedro, for your question. His first question is addressed to Leah. And the question is, did you already publish your project? If so, where can we hand information you collected through the surveys and the analysis of what you compiled? Yes, we already published the project. This is available online and has been so for more than one year. It's www.segurasenlinea.ca. You can also visit the website of Ipandetec, ipandetec.org, and there you will find a link to the website of Seguras en Línea. Thank you, Leah. In that sense, you can also access this information through Frida's website. Pedro also makes a specific question to Francisco and Jorge. Where could they read the thesis published in the context of the projects as well as any documentation on the initiative, he found the use of probes was very useful to identify vulnerabilities, and he congratulates them on the project. Thank you very much, Pedro, for your question. Many of this research as such is available on many platforms of the universities themselves. For example, there are several studies and theses at the technical universities, and this research was done in the context of La plataforma the, con the studies were done in the context of many projects. And a lot of information is available online. online. A specific web was created for the project called sensores.lat, and more information is available on that project. Thank you, Jorge. Guillermo, there's a specific question addressed to you on open net audit, namely whether the software developed is available to, to be used in educational and also if you can give us a contact to learn more about the development of your initiative and potentially explore some fond, uh, form of collaboration. She has the netaudit.rnp.com and we have a GitLab also uh, that has all the code available to 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 the community to sorry it's netaudit.rnp.br uh, and then there you can have the the link to the GitLab and download the, the code and yeah and if you if you want to 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 have more information about the software we, you can address my mail uh let's uh, if you can share with with the with the others gracias guillermo sí Thank you, Guillerme. We're going to add this in the information regarding this initiative. So if there are no further questions regarding the contents and address at Guillerme, Jorge, Francisco, or Leah, we will then proceed to close this webinar. We thank you all very much for your participation and for your time. You can access the content later, namely what each of them commented, as well as on the objective and on the projects themselves. This is through the website of the FRIDA program 
programa feed, feed net. So thank you very much to all of you for your time. <laughs>